Yeah, but it yeah, it absolutely does. But Sam, hmm. what were you saying about wanting PST to be our sponsor earlier? Oh my god! Imagine the possibilities. Okay, look, I've been a big <laughs> PST advocate for a long time. You know, when when Arizona stopped being one dollar is when they really lost me. First of all, all right, look. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, look, okay, I'm, you, you got me. For anybody not watching, all right, I'm clearly holding up the, the best flavor. Maybe not the best flavor, no opinions. But uh, the best flavor of uh, peace tea. Raspberry. Yeah, it, it looks like that uh, Green Day cover where like it's kind of like a grenade. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, PC culprit, if you're out there, listen. The nerd Militia loves you. <laughs> uh, yes, because the Nerd Militia ironically loves uh, peace tea in the yeah, same way that martial you. artists like to not smack people around. It's good to but, know how to beat people up, but you know, having the the power to do it, but then choosing not to exactly, waking up the and power like power to choose violence. Yeah, yeah. You you gotta wake up every day with violence in your heart and then See, look, choosing not to. Like that the logo of Peace T made with peace, love, and happiness. And that's what we here at the Nerd <laughs> Militia hope for everybody out there. You know, we love and support you. <laughs> mm. Well, I, I I do like peace, but I don't know who's buying peace tea. I don't know. Is it Arizona? <laughs> that would be kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, drinking all that Coke and peace. If only. That Coke is the fast track to peace. You know, but they you, used you, to put Coke in Coke. <laughs> I'm, that's pretty common knowledge. I know, it's crazy, right? <laughs> you know, what if, and now hear me out for like typical D and D. Yeah. You get like a a company that's making like a, a potion, health potions, messin. But inside these uh these health potions, cocaine. <laughs> that's a potion of speed, man. Come on. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, the talk show that brings you dungeons, news, monsters, I think, and homebrews. Yeah. I am your host, Orion. And I'm your host, Sam. Welcome back to a new episode. Well, you know, it's good to be here. We got peace tea and D and D, so you know, I I am good to go for the week. But you know, we we got something else uh, special. We have a guest with us today. Uh, oh, why don't man. you introduce yourself? Uh, hi there. My name is Avery, uh, also <laughs> known as Dynabees on Twitter, unfortunately. And <clears throat> sorry, I have a slight cold. <laughs> And um, I guess most people know me for playing Gothy on Fool's Gold, which uh, my friend is currently retelling as a YouTube series. That's awesome. Mm. I'm personally a big fan of that. Like, I got introduced, like, like a couple years ago. Just kind of stumbled upon it. I'm like, okay, I love this. Like, Dingo's art style. It, it, it's yeah. cute. It's fun. Uh, her storytelling, uh, like, it, it pulls me in. But it's like secondhand storytelling because, like, I hear uh, Felix is the brains of the operation there. Yeah, he was our DM, um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> certainly he he is a pure chaos sort of DM that does not shy away from mm -hmm. uh, causing consequences. We call we dub him the consequence DM. Um, but yeah, Daniel <laughs> yes. has been the masterful reteller of our huge odyssey across the bellowing wilds where we do nothing but make things worse for everybody around us oh man <laughs> that's always good <laughs> you love to hear it love to hear it right right being an agent of chaos you know you know is this the best <laughs> <laughs> i i just real like i just fixed this on the uh stream as we're doing this <laughs> i i had the audio output for you guys gone so oh, like no. uh, like I hadn't said, but don't worry, don't worry, because uh, uh, we had everything recording perfectly fine on the Libsyn. So backups for days, baby. We <laughs> nice. were prepared. Dream watchers were very confused. 
<laughs> yeah, Orion's just some uh, moron talking to himself. <laughs> F's in the chat. <laughs> Oh well, we tried. Rest in peace, chat. It's the most D and D thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it actually you is. That one. I know, and to think I have like a these little brass dice that uh, right in front of me, and Nat ones in the case. I, I should have popped them out and checked, but you know. Oh man, that reminds me. I forgot to show you. You okay? Ago, okay. My friend. Shout out to Ashley, one of my one of our biggest you know supporters for our podcast. Sent me this pair of dice or this dice set. Ooh. Okay, well, I don't know if I can how well I can show this on camera, but well, metal does tend to shine. But ooh, ooh, that that that's nice, dude. They have like uh, they have like eagles on them. Let me pull out a D twenty. Like little metal eagles. Yeah, it's fucking cool. Here, check this one out. So like. I, I feel bad for bees because, like, I know. Sorry, she, you can't she see. She doesn't have. She doesn't have the have, little no, camera thing the, there. Theater of the mind, man. Theater of the mind. I'm, I'm Ooh, like, like, you got a DM describe, my friend. Like, uh, they got yeah. like silver, uh, wing designs, like red numbers. Uh, you can see like the little claw details, the wings, and you can kind of uh, hold it up for you there. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I'll have to. Well, I can see it on like <laughs> on the YouTube tab that I have open. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, mm. cool. Ah. This was like a picture on the actual thing. See, but, yeah, the the, the cool. perks of the multi stream. <laughs> it, it, it works well. <laughs> <The power>. <laughs> <laughs> Unfathomable. Well, if Orion could learn to speak, he'd be going a long way here. But uh, it's okay, it is hard. So Sam here has. Uh, like, no, no, we're we're good. Okay, all right, but uh. Yeah, uh, Sam here has actually never really gotten it. He doesn't. He's never seen any of that uh, Dingo stuff. So he, Ooh. as far as Fool's Gold goes, he is new to the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I have seen, I love. <laughs> what I have seen? I've shown him. Uh, yeah, I showed him some pictures of your character. Oh, awesome! Well, so I watched. I watched a few um, of the uh, animations on YouTube. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ah, researching for uh, today's show, then. Ah, this was before when you mentioned uh, Dingo to me. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So, Orion, yeah. where did you where did you get started with Fool's Gold? Did you get started like at uh, the beginning? I, I yeah, at, at the very beginning, like uh, a couple years ago, like I uh, I was doing a lot of factory work and like I'd have D and D on the weekend, so I just like kind of crawl into my little space for doing D and D and like uh, after a campaign, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm bored now. So I'd go through like some YouTube stuff and kind of stumbled upon it that way. Okay. So you were there right there. Like you were there where it dropped. Basically you've been following it since it started. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, it, it's only been going on for uh, not even that long. I think uh, uh, when I first got into it, they're like maybe two or three episodes. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, now we're up to episode 31. I, you know, it's Dingo yeah, always I, gets me I, confused yeah. because she'll start talking about the episode that she's currently writing and everybody else only knows uh, what episode yeah. it's been released. So I'll get the numbers mixed up um, just mm. based off of like who I had the last conversation with. To move my mic oh, up. It, it makes sense. But like, uh, I do have one question uh, as yeah. far as Fool's Gold, gold goes. Uh, I've noticed that like there are some characters that kind of like uh, pop in and pop out. I I'm guessing that those were uh, players that would just kind of come and go as uh, things went. Yeah, we had two other characters with us, uh, Julian and Gorthan, who were our two friends, John and Puddles, um, who they started the Fool's Will campaign with us. But Dingo started retelling mm. the Fool's Will campaign about halfway huh. through like the actual campaign. And unfortunately, yeah, I kinda right around that. Yeah. Unfortunately, right around the time where the whole Taras thing happened, uh, Julian and Gorathan's players, who are like currently married, had a baby together and they had to drop out oh, because okay. just they couldn't keep up the schedule of you know, it was babies are demanding and they just couldn't stick mm. around any longer. So uh yeah, we you know, essentially all about that Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Father of four. <laughs> oh yeah. god. I couldn't imagine. Um, couldn't. Yeah, we tried for as long as we could to do it with with baby, but eventually it was mm. like once the baby gets moving, like once they're running around, it's like okay, we can't. This cannot be done anymore. Mm. Um, 
so Gorthin and Julian in the in the world are kind of just hanging out in Bundarico, basically. That's kind of just where we left them in in um in media. Then that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that there. So are a how lot long of... have you been? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go for it. Uh, how oh, long have you oh. been working with Fool's Gold and Dingo and all them? So I've. I have known Dingo since 2013 or 2012. Oh, wow. And then she Damn, was saying, I should have been looking at... Uh, uh, sorry, you, you can continue. I, I just looked at our, our comments and I'm just like, uh, I, I should have been looking at those from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Top tier professional here. That, uh, we would have known uh, right <laughs> oh, away that, that we were missing out. some audio. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it, we'll get it. Uh, <laughs> One day. The three screen action. So I've known Ningo and Felix since around 2013, I think, or 2012, one of those. And then the Fool's Gold campaign, Dingo was telling me that it was 2016 to 2018 was how long the campaign ran for. And then she started animating the Fool's Gold YouTube series just as the campaign was ending. So that kind of, Mm -hmm. there was a small section at the end where they kind of interlocked. And um, right. the campaign has wrapped up since then. And now she's just retelling everything. Okay, okay. But uh, okay. I basically still see Dingo and Felix daily now. Because um, mm. the three of us are still just like thick as thieves. And uh, Arena's player, Carson, he's off doing some extra schooling stuff. Like he kind of went his own way. And then Julian and, and okay. Puddles. Or John and Puddles also they have babies, multiple babies now, and another a third bean is on the way. Oh hell Ooh. yeah! But it should uh, be coming this month, actually, like October. Uh, I I wish them the best of luck with that because as a father of four, it's rough. I mean, on one hand, you are raising your own D and D party to be had yeah. at some point, but holy shit, if it's like, dude, I I can't even handle it sometimes. Like I'm picking food up off the floor, uh, con- mm-hmm. like. I, I I had a whole thing this morning. Like, why are all these half-eaten apples all over my house? Why are there pop tarts all over the floor? Like, and like being a DM is just like, okay, I deal with this with my players, but like, my patience meter for dealing with bullshit from players like is reset because I have a whole week in between sessions. <laughs> I, yeah, you with don't kids, get, you're lucky you get an hour yeah. tops. Yeah, literally. Mm, I can't even take a shit <laughs> without these kids <laughs> trying to kill each other. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, you're you're oh. good. Okay. I should preface to the audience that I do have a little bit of a cold. Mm. So I'm trying not to cough like into the microphone or I try to I try to mute myself before I before I start coughing, but I apologize. No, you, you got it. You got it. We wish you best health. <laughs> <laughs> the mm. funny thing about being a spectator to uh friend to uh, people with children is that John is a real a real Viking of a man. Like he's he is mm. he's he he is a real like a Viking in the modern era. Mm. Uh, so it's very fun looking at his his kids and being like, "You guys are going to be very interesting <laughs> when you guys get older." <laughs> based off of just your dad mm. and how much your right. dad is just like, "Yeah, let's go, let's go axe throwing. Yeah, let's go." Let's, <laughs> I let's love go. it. I yeah. love oh, it. Yeah, love that. And- love that. Uh, definitely a uh, shout out to uh, Jade uh, Callisto and Josh Ring in chat for letting us know that, well, especially Jade, because all platforms letting us know that we had the uh, <laughs> that <laughs> mute you. for a while. Like, oh, damn. How many quotes, man? Oh, y'all are very appreciated. <laughs> So now that we've met you a little bit, got through the introductions, we got through a little bit of free talk. Well, I guess we can go into the free talk now. How is your week going, guys? Do anything interesting? Mm, uh, there, there's always lots of uh, crazy stuff, uh, things that I shouldn't talk about on the podcast. So I'll just leave yeah, those okay. alone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, anyone on the uh, Nerd Militia server knows that there's uh, been uh, some trouble with a. Uh, our uh, AI technician, like a, uh, he, he's got some uh, shit going on, and uh, well, you wishing know, him all, some, the, wishing him the best of luck, you know. Yeah, you know, in some positive news, um, 
I, I, so correct me if I'm wrong, but you just had your 10 year anniversary, right? Uh, yes, oh, actually, yesterday. Uh, yeah, I have survived oh, 10 years man. of marriage. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, get the I survived t shirt. You no, know, marriage is a lot like a D&D campaign. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, it, 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 it is that level of commitment. <laughs> Hold on, wait, it, no. it's hard to keep those schedules together and right, like, but- like getting everybody to show up on time <laughs> i like the like it's life like marriage is like a D campaign whether it's like all right wife yeah. all right honey whether or not i do this just depends on this dice roll <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah absolutely you know so like like it, it really is like how many people do you know that have made it to level 20 mm. i mean you're at level exactly. 10 right now. You're Look at level at you 10, go. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'd think I'd have a better proficiency bonus at this use, point. <laughs> use this as your guys' motivation in your marriages. Get to that level 20. You know, fight mm. that big, big bad. <laughs> <laughs> if that's your boss at work or your wife's best friend, I don't know. Do what you got to do, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I'd say the big bad is the IRS because, like, you know, you get those tax benefits. <laughs> talk about the irs on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> they'll come for us <laughs> dude what's the irs <laughs> that that should be the big bad for like anyone who runs an acquisitions incorporated game <laughs> you're fighting the tax collectors that sounds like an excellent premise for a game honestly <laughs> oh fan it definitely is uh the last time i ran an ack inc game we had uh, this uh, stoner druid who was trying to build a weed empire and like taxes were absolutely going to come up. Like there was a point where he wished like a, you know, that dragon heist uh, module. They, uh, he wished for the treasure from that. Cause I, I made it a canon thing and he's like, okay, I'm just going to wish that treasure was here. Hey, yeah. My, my brother decided to like do a one shot that was connected to the campaign and random roll table. Someone got a dagger with a wish. Oh, oh, oh nice. boy. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said no, but like it got used in a way that ended up uh, breaking their ship. Oh my god! Unu f- filling a, a airship's hull full of gold that it couldn't actually hold. Oh yes! Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. oh no! Classic. Classic. Yeah, it, it straight ruptured, yes. <laughs> and then they had to pay villagers to scoop the, the gold into the into a bag of holding, which uh, led to like a the bank vault. <laughs> For the for headquarters, boy, oh sure not God. breaking any new ground by like making a wish that comes back to bite you in the ass immediately. That's like textbook <laughs> number one first thing you you're supposed to. to avoid when you make a wish. It's like, hey, consider how normally you gotta be super specific. Work. Yeah, well, the thing is, I didn't even monkey paw that as a DM. I was just sure? like, okay, hold up, I got, I got to do some math. Like, <laughs> hey, that's just I, the I, consequences I, of your choices. I don't, yeah, no, you that, didn't that was to just do straight any math. If that was, if that was the wish they made, that's on them. It's like the genie. It's just like, I don't know, man. I didn't even have to be <laughs> yeah, clever exactly. about this shit. You just did it all on yourself. I, I really didn't have to. I was just like, okay, uh, hold on, the. The av- the the size of the what they got for carry capacity is this many tons. Now uh, figuring out uh, how many ounces in a gold coin, multiply that by uh, <laughs> half a million. Oh, oh God, that's half way too million. much math for me. You could barely get me to do the oh, basic gosh. like you basic addition that D requires for <laughs> <laughs> calculating Literally. volume and weight. Uh, uh-uh, no way. I did not sign up for this. Mm. If there's right. more than two modifiers on an attack, you lost me already. <laughs> honestly like I, i'm it's it's weird like i'm ironically terrible at math like i've gotten better at math over the years and i passed my uh geometry class in high school which that really came in clutch for fi- calculating the uh volume of gold uh rupturing the ship okay, but at the D&D same time it's about the uh, extent of math that i've used since high school <laughs> <laughs> it really is sometimes I remember getting in an argument with my uh, high school math teacher about uh, him not adjusting his binary clock for daylight savings time. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm over here. We have a running gag at my table that I can't do math past 8 p.m. <laughs> like, that's my cutoff time. <laughs> where the, it just stopped, that part of my brain just stops functioning. Like, mm-mm, it's clocked out. That's valid. <laughs> mm. I, I love it. No math after 8 p.m. <laughs> just put out a sign. <laughs> 
it's like a suit like i'm legit i make a roll and then i'm like oh no what is this plus this plus this and as soon as my brain flatlines i'm like what time is it and i look at the clock and it's past eight and it's like ah oh, yeah i oh, know i hit my threshold it's like 59 she brains just like oh oh, oh yeah oh. exactly <laughs> <laughs> got him <laughs> no but i should do math but past 8 i think PM. now is a great time we have a free shit alert right uh, you, you know what? We do have a free shit alert, and it's a uh, free shit, free shit. <laughs> uh, coming to us straight from D and D Beyond. Uh, you can now download the twelve uh, sigil faction recruitment posters. Now, I'll, these are yeah, they're they're kind of neat. Let me uh, just pull that up uh, on the uh, little thing in the stream, and there we go. Yeah, we got a bunch of posters here, and I, I love factions. I absolutely love factions. And, like, you got 12 of them right here. They're all very kind of bare bones, like where the headquarters is, uh, what what plane they are aligned to. Now, okay. you might like that because you've been looking at a lot of the planes recently, Sam. True. And it lets you, like, oh, some iconic members. And what the epithet of this... Uh, faction <laughs> is so uh, an epithet kind of describes like the the general uh gist like uh what uh, they really embody so everything else is like bare bones like if you're a dm you can roll with these things like i personally love templates when i'm doing stuff like uh, when i was running acquisitions uh, the, the book provides a uh, fa some faction templates and i carried those over to traditional D D factions and then ended up giving like a, all these little uh, bonuses and little things to each of those people. So like, so if you encounter like a Harper agent, every Harper agent has like these three abilities okay, or like, right. yeah. Or everyone in the uh, Emerald Enclave has these three abilities. Like okay. it doesn't matter what faction it is. Like everyone in that faction has a certain set of abilities in addition to their normal set. So okay. it, it makes a, uh, battling any faction like a little bit more interesting right right yeah i could definitely see that i i do definitely see that like you fall into the problem of like you got like cultists and you got like agents you know and they're all generally the same they're people with like pitchforks or swords or something you know they're not special nothing special about them they're just guys <laughs> yeah, uh, they got some fun little mottos here, like the Athar. Uh, their motto is "Who claim the gods are frauds," or like uh, the Bleak Cabal, uh, "Who find no sense in the multiverse." Okay, uh, okay. The Doom Guard, who celebrate destruction and decay, sign up today. <laughs> hey, look! Let's take out a slogan. The fraternity of order who discover laws to find the truth. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, a bunch of like little things like this. It it can be fun for players to have an affiliation, and like this is very ambiguous. So you could like have it give as little or as much meaning to a campaign or a backstory for a character as you want. And more importantly for me is the just the the general template of it. You know, there's some p potential there. And I, I, I just like the recruitment posters because, like, you know, that that's a little thing to throw at your player. Like, oh, that's some substance. Yeah. You know, adding to role play, adding to background substance is always good for me, I think. Mm. Oh, dude, looks like I have, like, fox ears. <laughs> <laughs> you looking at your camera in the stream? Yeah, I was. <laughs> it's like, oh. All right, cool. It's great. <laughs> it looks to me more like you have like big, like big horns, like big white horns. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. You know what? You're right. Ooh. I'm seeing like, that. Uh, like, um, how, like Hellboy's horns. He's just like, oh, thing. yeah. Sam oh, the Tiefling. Cool. We're, we're good to go. <laughs> Dude, imagine having, like the pearl white, like horns. That'd be cool. uh -huh. Dude, that'd be so much maintenance. Like, Dude, white stains so easily. I, I couldn't have white horns. <laughs> and and then you get those people that are all anal about it and they'll like harass you after Labor Day. Fuck that shit. Oh my gosh. Wow. How dare Labor Day in the Forgotten Realms. 
They'd call it Peasants Day. Peasants Day. Surf's Day. I could see it. Surf's, <laughs> Surf's Day. Oh, I love God. it. It's so good. It, it well, is. Congratulations. You all get to not squat like squabble in the mud for today. Like, yeah. Go, thank, you so thank you so much. <laughs> Yes, you get I one love extra it. corn. I can finally pick out all the dried dirt from between my toes. Huzzah! <laughs> I can take a bath. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I, I like to think that, like most uh, towns and places in uh, your typical fantasy settings, would use like bathhouses. You know what I mean? Like, I, I kind of, yeah. I like that kind of thing in. Uh, like if you say you're watching like some anime, you get like that feudal Japan, and they're like, mm-hmm. "Okay, we got to go on to the bathhouse," and it's like, eh, you know, yeah, they kind of make sense. Like, they really have like the taverns where they have like you know, kind of like a bathhouse, where they have like the big like water mm. basins that they just like bring up to the rooms or whatever. There's like, you know, mm. they just like there you go, hop in there, then they carry you back downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't listen to an audiobook that had something like that. Oh, really? <laughs> well, that works. Yeah, it was really, they like a dwarf dude, just like, yeah, man, I gotta take a bath. He's like, all right. <laughs> Big old. <laughs> Love it. We have a running gag in our campaigns, or like a running scenario, where we almost always yeah. go to spas at some point in the campaign, uh, if not mm. multiple times. Yeah. Like a fantasy spa is such a fun, like. Little, exactly, it's the beach, it's the spa episode. We'll we'll be, be done oh, fighting yeah. Big Bad, and we'll go to the spa. And it's like kind of a, a mm. good, a good like. Uh, why did I? I was trying to think of like what's the what's the correct term for like giving somebody I don't know a treat. Like you give the DM a treat. Like here, mm. here, what can you come up with with the idea of a of a fantasy spa section? And then of course it's mm. Felix, so he's like, "Oh yeah, every uh, you know everybody's a mud elemental or a water elemental there, so you just like they're the ones that take care of you the entire time, stuff like that." But it's also yeah, it'd be like spirited away. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you you know, like, the, I run an, I have a campaign that I just run privately for Dingle and Felix, and spirits are yeah. a part of the world. So I was just Ooh. like, you know what, fuck it, I am just going to stick you in a legit spirited away. Hey, wait, like, have you have you heard about? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But have you heard about the Studio Ghibli uh, TTRPG? No. No? Yeah, oh. that, that's There's a thing. A cozy Studio Ghibli uh, inspired Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, that's I think we glossed like over that like a few weeks ago, but. <laughs> I think it's out now. Um, oh, is it? Check that out. Yeah, there, there was like a Kickstarter head. or something. I, I remember Ooh. that much. That definitely seems um, like something that should have been around like even five years ago. I'm surprised there isn't something like that mm. already. Yeah. Well, I, I think it took the OGL to kind of like break up the uh, monotony of TTRPGs in general for people to mm. be like, you know what? Fuck it. Studio Ghibli, D&D, I want it. I think it's because people saw Avatar, the Avatar one, and went, oh, oh okay, yeah. I guess we can mm. just do anything and oh, yeah, do gangbusters. Because they had the top rating Kickstarter of any tabletop mm. game, I think, is, is currently Avatar. Is La- Avatar the Last Airbender? I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this yeah. is post August. And uh, not to like you know toot our own horns, but Fool's Gold is second, if I remember. It oh, used yeah? to be second. It still mm. is, as far as I know. Yeah. But like we, yeah, we Fool's were Gold is talking- right up there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here, check this out. So it's called Obojima. Was said to be a world spanning over two hundred and fifty pages worth of details oh, yeah. and content. Mm. Dingo yeah. totally ran a sponsor spot for that. Also, I don't mean oh, to sound—I yeah. didn't mean to sound yeah, like a total I, yeah. asshole when I was like, "Oh yeah, we're so, we're so great." That second one, I'm. <laughs> nah, no. nah, you're good. Like, it, it's legit because it's money. good. <laughs> like, if oh, yeah. people—if it, if it wasn't good, people wouldn't be throwing money at it, you know. And, Dude, and it's like so Felix bad. has really worked hard with his world building to make something interesting, and then like oh, Dingo yeah. just kind of like throwing it out there. People like, yes, please, four claimers. Fucking amazing. I love it. Yeah, I'm seeing a player so bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the DM rut of just like, oh, I, I, I'm i running this. I like it, but I also want to play. Yeah. Oh, what's We're coming that? Towards Sorry? The end now. Oh, so I, I'm currently running our uh, Grim Hollows campaign. Okay. Um, and it's coming towards the end. You know, I was hoping to end it by the end of the year. And I'm I'm in the the vibe of wanting to be a player, you know. 
It's been oh, a while too. since I played the game. It's been like <laughs> I've seen I've the characters a, I want to play. You know? I've been like a GM exclusively for about two years now because uh, we haven't mm-hmm. been playing a new game for a while, and I'm just looking at Felix like, hey. When are we like? Come on, your turn again, buddy. I need, I, I need to be the one that causes problems for once. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of being mm. the guy who solves problems. Yeah, like at I, this point, I kind of get that. <laughs> longer than I've been a player, like yeah. What if I kiss stuff? Away? I find myself being that person in our games, where it's just like um, I kind of want to get back into the, the DM seat again, but I kind of don't because like. uh I I love our players uh, in our current game, but I feel like uh, my fellow players don't really, uh, they don't know how much control over the world they actually have. And since they haven't tapped into that yet, if I run a game, they're just going to be standing there like, what do we do? And I'll just be like, what do you want to do? Yeah. (laughs) And they're just like, you tell me. It's like, (laughs) This, that's not how this work. I mean, like uh, uh, you, you go, you, you go to your the hometown in your backstory. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, Uncle John shows up. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> DM, tell me about Uncle John. It's like this is your oh, uncle. You, it's your <laughs> uncle. You why, why don't you do introductions? Tell, tell the party. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I've, I, I want to. I'm the kind of DM that gives more power to my players uh, creatively uh-huh. when it comes to little things like that, and. I don't think our current party's ready for it. That's okay. You kind of got to, it's like boiling the frog, you know, they got to warm up mm, to it. Absolutely. And you don't want them to like completely realize all at once that they have complete control over the world because that'll, they'll immediately use that against mm. you. But like giving them yeah. a little bit of a taste test of like, Ooh, you guys get to decide some of this stuff. Uh, you know yeah, what you could, it, it, what Felix would probably do and what I would do is um, wait until they mess up and then definitely make sure, like, you know, it's one of those classic things where they fuck up and then you then wait a little bit and then you show them how exactly it affected the world. You know, mm-hmm. classic classic D&D stuff of, of just being like, oh yeah, this thing that you did definitely really changed stuff. Man, my cold must be hitting me really hard because I'm just spouting class, like basic D&D sh- stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, sorry. Sometimes <laughs> it needs to be said, you know? Like, get back to the basics. That is true. Every time you start a new D and D fresh, sometimes you do just kind of have to remind yourself, like, "Oh yeah, there's some really basic stuff you have to start at." Like, accidentally, like accidentally nuking your players because you forget that like they're tiny babies when they start out, and that nobody has over like thirty yeah. hit points. Definitely, oh that's yeah. that's a problem. <laughs> that's so funny because <laughs> in our second session, um, we had one of our players get bodied by a. Uh, a goose hydra <laughs> a goose hydra uh, yeah, yeah yeah so it was a it was That's a big excellent. mama goose with uh i believe i gave it four heads at the time and um you know we had our uh our roguish tabaxi you know he went to go scout out and he was i was like you know you turn around this corner you see what looks to be you know a little outset grow with a small pond <laughs> see a few like ducklets in the water you know seem to have you know between one and two heads at times then you see the large mama goose you know huh. catch you <laughs> you know i was like it clocks you all heads turn his first idea was like i strike it <laughs> it's like you're crazy oh my god <laughs> but the worst mm. part was out of you know the multi-attack of four three of them were crits yeah that's Inst- that's down. <laughs> Into the death. I was like, uh, you were rolling open like in the uh, in the roll twenty chat, I believe, yeah. and you didn't know how to fudge dice rolls on roll twenty. Like I still like, I think I've I learned yeah. how to do it for like a day, then I forgot how to do it by the time it became relevant again. Oh, I was no. like, yeah, I was like, okay, so the last hit knocked you down. I don't think it would go for a killing blow. He was like, no, nah, it's fine, just end my shit. <laughs> <It's> like. <laughs> I was like, there's nobody else around. You did kind of walk up on the nest. <laughs> cool. Uh, Jay joined our uh, server. Yeah, yeah. I did see that. I was talking to him in the, the general chat. Goose Hydra mm. is an excellent concept, though. <laughs> it's really like, wait, wait I don't even remember that where you found that. It's so cool. 
Yeah, it was it was only like a CR three or four. <laughs> what? But you know, strong for them at that like at that level, you know. The multi attack is what really makes that one dangerous because, like, if you're one v one, okay, that's mm-hmm. it, which it was one v one. Everybody else was more uh, back. He did, like, he did destroy like, to back one to rogue. Of- he gets right up in there. <laughs> yeah, he did kill one of the heads before you went down. Though. So that was something. <laughs> I legit forgot that like a CR three would be an appropriate level of like difficulty yeah. for a goose because we have That's a so goose. Funny. Like, we have I'm a sorry, goose man. in our PDF, which is yeah. a CR twenty, I think. <laughs> it's as strong as the Tarask. It's not slightly Christ. stronger. It's a oh it's a God. it's a magical. It's called the do- no. It's a, called the Doom Duck. It's a duck, uh, and it wears well, a magical yeah. hat. Duck. Oh, it's yeah, the same. It's the, the same duck, duck as the one Dingle uses to censor everything in the videos. It's That's a monster hilarious. now that you can encounter. Uh, yeah, That's and I so think it's funny. if it's not a CR twenty, it's damn close to it. And uh, yeah, Ooh. so I forgot that they're not actually supposed to be like super mega powerful creatures of pure death. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know of yeah, them now. From the, uh, the Grim uh, I mean, if you've ever met a guard goose in real life, it's like yeah, right. they are legit. Like uh, I'm from my, Canada, uh, wife's... We have Canadian geese. Like the, you don't; those guys do not fuck around. Mm. Only imagine uh, they do not. Uh, my wife's grandmother, uh, she uh, had some neighbors across the street that had a guard goose. So it's like, oh, oh. forget the forget your attack dog. Like, nope, hey, guard goose. Attack dogs like, can't fly. Holy shit, that would be worse. Yeah, that yeah. would probably scare me. Longer. And then they spread their wings out to make themselves seem bigger, and they flap their own around, so it's like a, a more hostile motion. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah, like, you know what? Hey, Canada, we're neighbors. I'm up here in Maine. <laughs> I'm not a neighbor to Canada. You could be. I could be. What's too cold here? It was very cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sam's a Jersey boy. Okay, Jersey you guys boy. Are on, oh yeah, you are on the East Coast, duh, based off of your yep. like, time zone. Okay, I'm all yeah. the way on the West. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, so it's like what, like Ontario? Is, it, is Ontario what's good? Bruh. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got a wide variety of wrong knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ontario. I'm approximately like, wrong about many things. <laughs> You're not not even approximate. Ontario's over the Great Lakes, bud. Like it's not even far from you. Oh man, it feels far. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Whenever someone says Ontario, I always think of that one character from Spinneret, the werewolf of London, Ontario. Spinneret? I think I've ever seen that. And yeah, it, that it, it's a webcomic. It, it, it's great. I've, I've talked about it on the show before. It's the one where like Ben Franklin's a time-traveling superhero. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, uh, he... Uh, he catches a ride do- during his kite experiment with a time traveler, gets dropped off in like a 2007 and the time travel was like hey uh, you stay here till i finally find some time to come back and get you and then like uh ben franklin walks into a biker bar like the terminator like i need clothes and they're like they see this old naked guy like what the fuck and they start uh, like yeah, harassing him going on and here? <laughs> yeah, so he he takes a, a couple of their uh, he knocks a couple guys out, takes their clothes, and in the middle of that brawl, he finds out because he's so important to the time stream, the universe bends reality around him, so he cannot be hurt in any way. Holy shit! This is like Ben Franklin gets isekai. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's isekai into anime? the modern does it sound world. Like an extreme anime present, like it does, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the irony there because like uh, the main character Spinneret, she hates manga and loves like uh, western comics even though there's a lot of anime influence okay okay Interesting. and then they have a they got the league of american superheroes and the league of canadian superheroes never heard of a canadian Dude, superheroes. is it just all hockey players uh no they got like werewolf of london ontario the green gable a uh, uh, cat of nine oh. tails and like uh i think they had like a Another one, like it's a, like a Ware Cerberus, which that sounds like an amazing monster to throw that into a. Awesome. Uh, oh, yeah, man. that sounds fucking awesome. Like, imagine you're 
your players fighting a were Cerberus. Like you got like a werewolf with multi attack coming from like these two extra heads. It looked really cool. Writing that down next Cerberus, to hydro- I, so, so I'm curious if you mm. like this idea. Um, so we have our uh, we had a Tabaxi Druid in our party who um, acquired the Fey transformation, you know, mm. as an addition to her, you know, humanoid class, right? So now she's, you know, a blood Fey. So I kind of gave, you know, some Fey magic influence to her Druid abilities and changed her wild shape. And gave her a mythic shape instead. Mm. And I homebrewed mm. some like mythical creature transformations for her. Okay. <laughs> and like I gave her like a like a griffin, a kutal, you know, a luska, you know, a few fucking. Oh, you should, it'd be kind of neat if it'd be kind of op oh, if, server, uh, if Fox you know? is still yeah like it'd be kind of op if uh, Fox stays around, but being able to turn into like a little phoenix like fox like that'd be all right it. it'd probably be like the last one she unlocks like yeah that, you know that makes sense like late oh, game her and fox like <laughs> future <laughs> joe grass combined oh man she, actually that'd be a just, fit hmm? sorry i'm curious yeah. out there i'm now no. worrying about go, the go go ahead so is yeah. she just able to transform into other creatures? So it's, it's her wild shape. That you've given her? Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mm. sure, I, she still has the, the normal wild shape, but mm-hmm. as like an addition, she has a buffed up mythic shape. Yeah. Where it's, you know, I, stronger creature, but less of a duration. Yeah. Yeah. Because like uh, we're, we're using the, uh, yeah, we're using the Grim Hollow stuff. So yeah. the idea that the uh, Grim Hollow transformations can like alter your class abilities is kind of a thing that he's been playing with. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh man. That's super interesting. So like there's things like, you know, lycanthrope, vampire, lich, you know, specter, mm. you become like an undead. Mm. It's all kinds of things. And, you know, Faye is one of them. Like Orion's character became a primordial, you know, so now elemental based creature. Mm. Cool. Yeah. It's <laughs> really cool. Yeah. What yeah, of the I, I really in my like campaign? It. Excuse me. Oh yeah. Uh, one what of the players in my campaign, he's normally his default state is a skeleton dragonborn, but uh, maybe a while Ooh. ago I gave him the ability to turn into a straight up dragon, like a straight up skeletal. Oh. He turns oh. into a vulture dragon technically because he's sort of like, he's, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to try and be succinct as quickly. He's a, <laughs> right, right. he's a skeleton dragonborn who is starting to become uh. partially a grim reaper. He's like kind of moving into, he's like, I'm turning into a grim reaper because because it is a world of spirits and Grim Reapers are a thing. Uh-huh. But the Grim Reapers are represented mm. by by vultures in this world. Like that's kind of their like their animal, okay. their creature. So he's turning from a skeleton dra- a skeleton dragonborn and then he turns into a large skeletal vulture dragon. Is kind of like oh, his yeah. second evolution. I like that. I like that a lot. I- I'm in love with this. I absolutely am. The, the concept, everything about it, it's yeah. just mm, it- it's so good. It's also a uh, not only is that so okay again I'm trying to be succinct with this he's also mm-hmm. got a adopted daughter who is also okay. a a reborn grim reaper spirit and the dragon form mm-hmm. is achieved by the two of them basically dragon ball z fusion dance like it's a fusion oh, of the two yeah, of them that's... working together <laughs> I love it I love it it's so good I have tried to work on a fusion spell for uh, a homebrew I, I never I haven't actually put uh, like the whole thing in like a little PDF because I'm lazy, but <laughs> but one of these days, because it would function a lot like uh, the, the soul uh, bound armor uh, merging that Sam used in uh, our previous game. Oh yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that one was a lot of fun. That, the way I, I had a character. Oh yeah. Sorry. I was going to say the way I basically did it with him was that I, I worked mm-hmm. as if like when you, when he, works in tandem with his daughter. His daughter has a special, has certain spells that he can, he has access to when he becomes a dragon. And then okay. it, they naturally get to do three turns of battle. They can be a dragon form. And then every turn okay. after that is a dice roll dependent on the NPC, on whether or not they can maintain that form. So they're guaranteed mm-hmm. three. And then if everything after that is like up to the, up to uh, the dice gods. So it adds a little bit mm-hmm. of extra like, you know, awesomeness when they keeps when they can keep going and uh, keep right, battling right. it out in giant kind of like form. It's stable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Uh, we were looking into the uh, Soul Eater uh, D and uh, 
well, mm-hmm. not D&D, but like the Soul Eater uh, tabletop uh, that we found online. And Ooh, it's very much like Eater. that with the Soul Resonance. And it's oh, just man, like, I love, I, I, I love the concept. And, you know, I think I might uh, take some of what you're talking about right there and bring it sure. into some of the, the next game that I run. Because uh, Sam it loves putting companions in games. He like he uses uh-huh. uh, Stibble's Codex all the time. Do like and gaming. the concept of like taking that fusion spell I was talking about, a little bit of what you're talking about there, uh-huh. is like oh, a, a, a spell to be able to fuse with companions. It's like yeah. every, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like go ahead. <laughs> Oh, that, that, that's that's it. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. So one of my one of my friends was talking about um, how they're doing. You know, they're talking about doing an in person Digimon campaign oh, where you know one person fun. plays the the player, one person plays the Digimon, and I'm so fucking excited for that. Oh. Man. <laughs> I'm gonna go off. <laughs> if I can uh, recommend dude. it to you, Sam, uh, to yeah. pick out our Fool's Gold PDF. There is a oh, yeah. new druid class there called Druid of the Swiftness, and it's the druid class that came from Gothi, um, that we, we okay. basically Ooh. used for inspiration for the entire class. And it's a class built entirely around you and your mount. And having spells oh, that work that. with you and your creature, you can cast spells through your creature as if, like, you know, maybe you want to mm. fire a lightning bolt and it just turns into your creature's breath attack instead. And there's later spells that. where you can Ooh. transport back and forth, like, like I can pop to where the my creature is. My creature can pop to where I am. If you need like to quickly traverse. Dude, one of area. my favorite archetypes of like all time magic stuff is like the beast tamers, the summoners. You know. Yep. Yeah, yep. I love that. That's an entire subclass. It. There's actually a couple. Uh, there's another one that's a ranger subclass called. Yeah. Oh, shit. I can't remember what it's no, it's, it's in the PDF. It's a. Uh, Oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's basically as a ranger, you are given this little ice iguana thing called a cryodon, and it's an ancient, Whoa. extremely, uh, it's like a baby creature that can actually live for millennia. So you have this guy, okay. and then they're like, okay, as a part of your training as a ranger, you have to take this guy out, and you in the world, you together experience the world and grow stronger. Mm. And it's like you're mm. giving this guy right. knowledge, mm-hmm. um, and then that's how you. But you're an entirely ice based all of your mm. skill sets are kind of like icy based i'd have to okay. read up on it again but it is similar to the druid of swiftness where there's a lot of working in tandem with your little iguana Ooh. ice partner that uh oh, kind hey. of this cute guy sits on your shoulders i remember that being the oh, art yeah. for him He's i did have this idea for like a, a dragonborn drake warden who has like a, a drake as his mount or like his, his oh. yeah i love the idea of like a dragonborn <laughs> who's like out there he's like actively hunting dragons <laughs> like <laughs> the irony he's like I, I, I think that's a like, classic trope and it's great like, I'm coming for y'all <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> only one fuck you and i love the idea of like <laughs> you know maybe he like found this little drake and he's like oh you know innocent being you know we'll get them together you know is this I like a, a Timon and Pumbaa? He's one of the good ones. Exactly. Because Drakes aren't dragons, you know? So No, he's like, this guy doesn't count. Look at him. He's just a pupper. Yeah. Yeah. He's an innocent bean. Yeah. Look at this yeah. baby. Look, look at him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's I, so I, cute I, and no alone. <laughs> yeah, Can I, we keep him? Like, exactly. Huh? God, that's <laughs> us when we play in D D D. We're sucker for pets and we're suckers mm. for like sad orphan kids. Like I, for, I instantly forget whenever I put a sad kid in front of Dingo and Felix that that kid is getting adopted, and I'm like surprised he can do this whenever it happens. <laughs> like, I mean, pretty much all of my players have a companion at this point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm weird yeah, with I, it because, like, I, I started the game with a goat. <laughs> yeah, you got a yeah, goat. You got a familiar. Like, you're great. He's our mm. carry goat. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I unfortunately I made... got bodied in the last fight. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Burrito um, lives. <laughs> yeah, I made Gothi and Jawbone specifically around, because I was looking at the Druid class, and I'm like, what do you mean they just summon a creature and then it, like, goes away? And they don't really, like, mm. create a bond with it. I'm like, that sucks. Mm. I want a giant dog I can ride. <laughs> and I want him to be my best mm. friend. Give me that. And then uh, great Felix... The gracious and all oh, chaotic DM, DM was like, "All right, you know what? Absolutely, here you go." Oh yeah, damn! I, I absolutely love uh, the way that Felix DMs. Just from hearing these stories and hearing from you about it, it's just like, 
Damn, we have got to get him on the show. I, I want to like ask him some questions about his. I want to uh, get in a game with. I, I want to pick his brain. You want to hang out? I'll let him know. Pass along the word. <laughs> yeah. He's he's, he's a really so great awesome. DM because Dingo and I have talked about this before. Felix, D- Dingo and I are both like writers, kind of in our free time. I, I make right. comics, mm. and then she does the YouTube series. So we're both very privy to the three act structure and to like tropes and stuff like that, like that mm. writer's brain. Mm. Felix is not as well versed in that stuff, which means he can pull shit out of his hat that none of us saw coming because none of us right. expected it. Because <laughs> he, she's not following the rule book, but it's so much more fun because <laughs> we can't call it. We're just like, "What do you mean you can do that?" And he's like, "I don't know," and he just does the <laughs> shit. And it wrecks our world because we just didn't ex- we didn't see it coming. Like you know, sometimes you're watching an anime or a TV show, and you can clock it from a, like a mile away. Like oh, mm. they're gonna be long yeah, yeah. things, something like that. With Felix, no, yeah, don't, yeah. Even, don't even bother. I wish I was that level of. I wish I had that much level of stealth as a DM of just being able right. to be mm. like, because that's like one of those gold standard like trophies every DM wants on their bookshelf is like the whole the whole you did not see this twist coming, uh, mm. trophy. I've gotten it a yeah. couple times out of some sessions, but it he feel, I can never top Felix on how hard he can throw a curveball at us. Uh, and uh, for sure, Dingo too. But Dingo is really great at the Long Kong world building twist. Mm. You know the kind of twist that you should have seen coming if you were paying attention. Uh, right. But I'm not. I'm, yeah. I'm like too busy doodling to, <laughs> to <laughs> completely to like you know because she's she's sprinkling this in over like a year of a campaign and then when she reveals it it's like god damn it i should ah uh, you know it's one of those, those, yeah. those things you could totally call but i was just too yeah busy I, I definitely around. see that you know uh, she's felix worth- strikes me as the kind of guy that uh he's probably got the made a player cry during a campaign he's probably got that one under his belt well yeah but i cry all the time like i cry when yeah. i'm just a crier i cry when there's a sad commercial like it's not a hard bar to clear with me but he's definitely earned some Look, uh, real have... people moments too you should have heard my party when i introduced the ghost dog all right oh, oh. <laughs> no. is, he, is he can you still pet him they tried they definitely <gasps> tried can but my brother you? tried so hard to bring it with us. They were able. They were able to pet him because he kind of like would materialize and then de- dematerialize. Like mm. he was kind of winking in and out of existence. Well, at least I can tell him he's a good boy <laughs> and he can hear me. Mm, yeah, uh, my brother was so gung ho. Like uh, <laughs> tried, <laughs> and then my character is like, no, no, th- this thing is going to be a whole lot of trouble. Uh, we got some weird, spooky shit happening in this town. There's nobody here, and just this dog. Something ain't right. <laughs> oh, no. Dog liked our uh, our warlock, though. <laughs> mm. Oh, no doubt. Very intrigued by our necromancer. <laughs> mm. I I well, I mean, he's a he's a ghost necromancer. Mm-hmm. Exactly right. He's like he's like you smell mm. familiar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it adds up. Mm. I, I always. <laughs> I love just like they're like oh we're walking through the town it's a nice night you know nobody seems to be out somebody rolls the highest perception you look to see a ghost dog sitting in the middle of the road <laughs> just sitting there I would still. be like that is a red flag like, and I am ignoring it that's a dog Can I was like it tilts its head at you as it walks mm. into a nearby building and disappears. <laughs> But like I'm going to mm. that damn building because it's a dog in there and head pats. Oh, they were like right? dog you said. <laughs> Easiest way to lure me into a trap. Put dog. Yeah, in I was it. like, I need like ten <laughs> minutes. To see a ghost dog. <laughs> Fuck you and everything else you Honestly. guys want to do. There's got a him. dog. <laughs> like, got him. Dogs get him. Amazing. I I that's the other thing. You know, when you when you're a DM and you have your players, you know exactly what cookie crumbs you have to lay down in order to get them to. You know, I don't. Mm. I say Dang. I don't railroad. I leave cookie crumb trails. Mm. You think mm, you exactly. know? You think you're going there by yourself? But I've I've put cookies in there. <laughs> There's a cookie. So mad. Um, and you gotta lure them in. Little message, you know, yeah, exactly. them into it. And um, putting a tameable monster in Felix's way is like the ultimate cookies for him. It's like <laughs> nine times out of ten, if I'm like, look at this thing. It's big and it look, it's kind of oh, sentient. So you could probably tame it. It could probably be a pet. And he's like, and like, you know, he just goes right for it. 
all the time. Like, I don't know what our druid is up to, but she's like collecting all of like the heads and stuff of the enemies we've been killing. Yeah, heads, <laughs> body parts, <laughs> you name it. She's, she's up to something. Are you, sure she, are you sure she's a druid or did she just say she's a druid? <laughs> yeah. I, look, I gave her insect as a spell and her first idea was like, I need to check everywhere for every insect possible. Now she just has a bat. She's just collecting. Beehives, like ant hills. <laughs> Man, that it's is fantastic. some really real Fire horror movie. There, I think. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I want a mantis. I want ants. <laughs> mm. like, what okay, have I do, done? girl. Never makes you happy. Right? She's she's fitting the, the summoner subtype for sure. She's got an army. Uh, okay you know what you know what's one of, one of my like my cookies like the cookie come trail that'll get me yeah, Felix, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's really funny so uh, uh orion so you've watched the fool's gold campaign and you know how you remember how gothy yes. has a a large rock named Dwayne? it's a really round rock that she just has mm. a rock okay. yeah i, I yeah, think i have seen that right yeah so felix put that in our in our path and he was like, this thing, he he put in, he, we found it like really early in the campaign, like maybe like session three. Mm. And I was mm. just like, awesome. I love a rock. I love a good rock, especially if it's like an orb shape. Oh, yeah. Fucking love me a good rock. Um, and I'm like, this is mine. And the thing was that it was supposed to be a cursed rock where no matter how hard you tried, you couldn't get rid of it. But I never wanted to get rid of it. It's a premium right. rock. Oh. So I just kept it. What did it do? Nothing. It, that's the only thing that it did was that if you tried to get rid of it, it would have magically appear on, on your person again or like in oh. your possession. And I never tried yeah. to okay. get rid of it. So I never liked, so I never. Never found out the curse. I never right? found it, it was paranoia bait. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was after the God, that would work on really ADHD, funny. like the like the reverse. Like, did I, where did I leave my phone? <laughs> yeah, where did I leave my rock? <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't. God until damn it, my rock is missing. It wasn't until after the campaign was done that Felix told me that, like, yeah, that you never could have gotten rid of that rock even if you tried. <laughs> but I never yeah. wanted to. It's a good damn rock. What would happen if you like threw it at somebody? It would you know? appear just... in like next day. I imagine oh, twenty four hours. Unlimited later. ammo rock. Oh, unlimited rock. <laughs> But I can't do yeah. that. It's, it's OP, man. I can't oh, do that to my rock friend. Too powerful. Because what if I, what if the rock breaks? What if I damage the rock? Uh, you know what? I, I feel that. Uh, on, on a side note, uh, Sam, would you, uh, why don't you tell us about the monster for the week? Oh yes, yes. Is it a rock? All right. <laughs> it is not a rock, unfortunately. Kind of wish it was. Now it should be a three-headed yeah. rock hydra. Yeah, Fortune is just a, just a dragon and said, you know, I, I feel like I've let you down with it not being a rock. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'll forgive you. But you instead, you know, we got, we got purple dragons today. I don't know okay. what you know about purple dragons. You know, but, Are you asking uh, me? You're gonna, I'm going to learn you with it. It's both a question and not a okay, question. Okay, good, because I know nothing about them. They're purple All right, and cool, dragons. Cool. I prefer it that way. They are, they are in fact, purple and dragons. Oh. So, <laughs> so to anybody who doesn't know what a purple dragon is, you know, other than the fact that it's purple, let's start with telling you what a chromatic dragon is, right? So but most people know uh, chromatic dragons were a type of dragon distinguished typically by a solid, non-reflective coloring of their scales. Uh, they were generally evil, greedy, and predatory, and usually worshipped Tiamat, the big mommy dragon god. All right. <laughs> so, purple dragon. Never referred to her as like that before. That's new. <laughs> Learning yeah, so much about you, Sam. Mommy. Look, man. People, I've I've seen the internet. Okay, <laughs> I know how they feel about dragons. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Continue. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> purple dragons were a species of chromatic dragon you know as their color is you know solid color they were often thought to be hybrids of reds and blues and not their own kind of you know thing uh purple dragons were large formidable creatures they possess long lithe bodies all right i need to fit this all in my screen it was this long, lean bodies, and they had scales that ran from deep purple to midnight black. Two long, white horns uh, sprout above its seething red eyes, while long, black, curved spikes run down from the base of its skull to the tip of its tail. The purple dragon's dark scales allow it to blend in with the night sky and dark caverns. 
So at birth, a purple dragon scales are a pretty vibrant in indigo color. As the dragon matures, the scales become larger, thicker, harder, and darker. Dull dragons are uh, completely violet, growing darker until they are nearly black at the great worm stage. So we just get pretty. <laughs> I don't know what the comparison to like an amethyst dragon is, if they kind of take like the darker, you know, shades of the violet spectrum and they're kind of like amethysts are more vibrant. I'm not sure. I don't know. And I also, well, I mean, I would imagine it has more of a metallic sheen to it, despite it not being a metallic yeah. dragon. Right. Especially with um, purples, they are, you know, usually known to live in, you know, the underground, in the underdark. Mm. They are often, you know, uh, what's what's the word? Uh, Subterranean. Yes, but they are they are uh, kind of mistaken for black dragon, you know, as their dark color kind of blends in with the shadows and all that shit. But you know, the Fair thing enough. with that is, black dragons do not live underground. You know, people who live permanently in the deep hollows of the earth know purple dragons as an all too real and much feared threat. As you know, a lot of people don't really believe that they exist. Um, so, yeah, purple dragons, also known as deep dragons, are possibly the least well known of the chromatic dragon family. Most surface creatures have no knowledge of the existence of purple dragons. Many of those that have heard of them dismiss such stories, myths, or misconceptions. You know, being mistaken for black dragons again. And what reminded me and what I had to kind of talk about a little bit, I don't know if you like Spyro, but purple dragons are huge in Spyro. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> you, you don't say. Yeah, you don't say. Look, man, so to anybody who doesn't know what Spyro is, it's a kick-ass game. I'm going to give you some lore. There's some poor about colorblind it. person out there who's just like, uh, I'm oh. more of a, you know, I'm, more of a yeah, crash look, bandicoot kind of guy. colorblind racist, all right? But purple is a color. So uh, uh, <laughs> you're saying Spyro is black coated. I mean, if you're colorblind, I guess. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't see black's not a color. Anyway. So, so are they going to make like uh Samuel L. Jackson, the voice of Spyro in like the upcoming oh Spyro my movie. God. Imagine. No, it's just going to be a, a Netflix rock. original. <laughs> no, it's just going to be Nobody else other than SpongeBob is allowed to voice Spyro. SpongeBob. <laughs> not even same, like the voice of spongebob just yeah. SpongeBob. well it is the same voice actor <laughs> Shh, <dude. laughs> oh okay sorry sorry using to do the spongebob voice for spyro <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. but yeah uh, i'm purple sold dragons and spyro are a special and rare breed of dragon you know the prophecies foretold that a purple dragon is born once every 10 generations they hold the power to master more than one element as well as other abilities the Guardian Dragons thought were not possible. <laughs> Throughout Dragon history, there, there's known to be only two purple dragons. You know, you got Spyro, obviously, and you got Malfour. Uh, this was the uh, first purple dragon that became the BBG of the Spyro world. <laughs> Spyro lore represent. <laughs> Uh, this guy, you know, the first one, believed that the true nature of the purple dragon was to destroy and remake the world, summoning the golems of the deep and destroyer to initiate the great cleansing. Basically, you know, reflecting on the fact that purple dragons are evil. <laughs> so, kind of go a little bit deeper into that. In the Forgotten Realms, a purple dragon is a talented manipulator of other creatures. It achieves control through lies, misdirection, and mental domination. A purple dragon might seek control for any number of reasons, including sheer delight in <laughs> bandying its power about a desire to form a bulwark or allies and thralls for security, or curiosity about newly discovered tunnels or crevices leading to unknown areas. They loved to explore, and they loved mm. new stuff, shiny stuff, they weren't opposed to working with other dragons or non-dragon creatures, you know. They were mostly known to work with, like, the drow, I believe, and stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So it can be underground in the Underdark kind of region. Oh, yes. Yeah. If you, you know, you go into the Underdark, anybody who's native to the Underdark will know about purple dragons. Or should, at the, you know, the most part. 
That's cool. I did mm. not know that they mm. were. The uh, further you go down, the more common or more rare, I believe they are. Yeah. More purpley. They, they don't are. like to fuck with people. Yeah, the more purple. They <laughs> <laughs> the deeper purple they become. Deep purple. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it'd be really cool to have a dragon. I don't know if it's necessarily a purple dragon, or maybe maybe this is yeah. the potential for a a new kind. Would be one that yeah. has a chromatic shell, like a a, a scarab beetle, really shiny Ooh. metallic. Maybe a bismuth dragon, like one of the oh. crystal dragons. But a I did one. see that there are like a rainbow one. I, I, I like know if that's that. A homebrew dragon, or if it's a well, no, like a, a bismuth dragon would be a rainbow g- yeah. form of a gem dragon. But here's the thing is bismuth is it a man-made mineral it doesn't naturally occur so you have the potential there in a story to have completely mm. man-made dragon like an artificial created that one. is true oh and that could be its origin story. i mean that is already kind of you know why not they already kind of do that yeah <laughs> shit i could see it i i love it i'm, I'm already a fan of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i know I, what's oh yeah you're gonna say uh, i i was about to say that kind of it if anything, the little the big dragon construct thing that uh, mm. that fool's gold used to kind of like fly around and stuff that would be oh, yes, the, the, mecha the, dragon. the epitome of of the a bismuth dragon. dragon. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Although I think it's just, I think it is just, uh, it's just straight up metal. Although it is powered by crystals mm. too, Ooh. technically, mm. part crystal, part souls. Mm-hmm. That would fit the, the mecha dragon. The Mega Dragon was one of those things where where Felix was like, "Oops, I have accidentally given them something way too powerful <laughs> too soon in the campaign." Uh, right. So he had to like <laughs> he did not he didn't nerf it, but he definitely added consequences to. How did he whoop some Mega Dragon? Mecha dragon? <laughs> uh, I that mean, he crazy. he had a he had a desktop image of a giant Mega Dragon. I think he was just like, "Man, okay. this thing is so cool! Oh, I need maybe. to add it to my campaign." Because hmm. no, he's told me directly that that was. Where he got the inspiration from this image on his desktop mm. background um so i think he just got too excited and threw it into the campaign and then realized that <laughs> one of our characters uh arena arena absolutely love arena's player absolutely loves like mm-hmm. gundams like straight up like girl log on his favorite <laughs> show so dangling Man, that we have in front a of gundam him. campaign in the in the works whoa well the, the the guy that's supposed to be running it is very flighty on our server, so oh, uh, to be determined. But like we supplied Some him with all the source material he could need, and we had like players all ready to go. But uh, that's one of the things that we're trying to get going with the server because like we got mm-hmm. plenty of people that want to play, but we only currently have one uh, campaign running on the server. We'd mm-hmm. like to see a couple more because like it, it's fun to do. We have more like. Uh, yeah. swapping players between DMs and stuff. Yeah. You know, kind of a player exchange type thing. Be able to find the party that works for everybody. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. uh, party guys. chemistry is a big thing. Yeah. What, mm-hmm. How much... So. What, how many campaigns have you had in a single week consistently? Like, how many campaigns have you run on a like okay i guess the more better question is like <laughs> what is your campaign schedule like do you guys meet on bi-weekly do you guys meet uh, we uh, do every week oh okay yeah just just a typical weekly yeah mm. i yeah, i, I run uh, every sunday okay there was a period in our in time in my life where i had three different campaigns in a single week oh my god Ooh. that's crazy that didn't that uh, didn't last too long yeah. that lasted for maybe about a year and a half i think and they were, that sounds we were like, like it's a recipe for burnout. <laughs> well, it was a different DM every every campaign. It was Felix Ningo and I. Mm. We just rotated, basically. We each had a campaign going at the oh, same wow. time. Mm. Makes sense. Right. Well, there was, we didn't have more. a whole lot else to do at the time. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. Like, uh, We had a player in one of our games. And he had three other campaigns, two of which he ran on the side in addition to being in our game uh mm-hmm. that would be grim feather like uh, we record our oh, games yeah. uh, not really as like a D D le- uh, podcasty mm-hmm. kind of uh uh play thing just like recording serves as a good campaign log mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah for sure yeah i have a friend of mine uh dead aussie gamer who um he will run campaigns for kids 
at like the local YMCA or whatever. And I think he's mm. like, that is a skill mm. set that is crazy. That's to pretty me. Awesome. Like I, I, he I runs like multiple that. games, like it might be a day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely yeah. insane. I mean, he won an award at Gen Con for being a DM and like, God damn, oh, wow. did he deserve it? Yeah, absolutely. He shout he, out to them. Holy shit. Yeah. Shout out to Dadazi gamer. Great DM. I got to play with him recently. He's a, an amazingly, oh, uh, like a, like he's like a smooth DM where like you, mm-hmm. you think you're able to throw curveballs at him. You think you could maybe get him on the back foot. Cause, um, you know, sometimes when you're, especially when you're in front of, in front of a live audience, it's like, okay, ha ha ha. And I hadn't gotten to play mm-hmm. as a player for a while. So I definitely wanted to shake things up and like, you can't mm-hmm. catch that guy surprised. He, he could roll with right. any punch. Very DM rolls. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I, I see that. This. So, Purple Dragons were slender and agile, like I said before. Uh, they hunted by patiently stalking their prey. The long body of a purple dragon is particularly lithe, cat like, and serpentine. The swept back wing, struckler, wing structure and sleek, tapered head allowed it to worm its way through narrow subterranean tunnels. Uh, purple dragons also apparently have an odor reminiscent of the musky smell of ophidians. Snakes. They smell like snakes. That's kind of weird. He's a snake. Interesting. Stick. I didn't know dragons had like an odor. I never. Really I mean, thought everything about... in D D has an odor, but like we just never. Yeah, I mean, I, I never thought about yeah, like what a dragon would smell like, you know, other than their environment, I guess. I don't know. That's pretty cool. They uh-huh. lived in the underdark and were rarely found on the surface. Um, yeah, they often allied with Drow and considered themselves rivals of cloakers and mind flayers. They were chaotic evil and had a psychic breath weapon that confused and disoriented the target. Purple dragons are described as deeply and sadistically evil. They delight in spreading fear far and wide, combining raids for food with outright destruction and mayhem. They are the scourge of the prairies and farmlands. Excuse me. All the more terrifying because they are night hunters, you know, disappearing in the night sky with their purple, almost black color. You know, that'd be kind of horrifying. They are almost like- always, you know, of the chaotic evil or the lawful evil alignments, you know. And they kind of are very arrogant, even for a dragon, you know. For some reason, purple That's dragon. That's saying something. <laughs> wow. Yeah, for some reason, they think they're like the top of the top. You Even know. the other dragons think these guys are hoity-toity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and apparently they, you know, they actively seek out other dragons, you know, both metallic <laughs> and chromatic, to f- just fuck with. <laughs> like they just like to fuck around and find out. You know, these guys strike me as like the hairless cats of dragons. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It, and, it, it, oh. It's like uh, this is the like you know something's fucked when a dragon calls you a narcissist. This, this yeah, is the wow. epitome <laughs> of what a dragon would call a narcissist. Look, and it's not often you hear about, you know, dragons fighting other dragons. So when you hear about, like, scholars saying that, like, purples are out here scrapping it up with reds. <laughs> <laughs> the, the purple dragons are scrapping with the reds. What is this, a Ninja Turtle episode? It's crazy, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't even know they were in the Ninja Turtles. That's crazy. Dude, I I grew up on Ninja Turtles. Like you, you pick an iteration. The purple dragons are almost always there, and and it's fantastic. Like I I love most iterations of the Ninja Turtles. And you Uh, know what kind of solidifies the fact that you know purple dragons and deep dragons are kind of badass in my eyes. uh They Mm. so their preferred food were seafood, right? Kind of weird, you know, considering they lived underground. But I guess you know they got clams, kuatoa, you know, like you know. Mm. underground fish you know you got like abolis and stuff yeah they they ate abolis you know like maybe there's a drow fishing village on a lake yeah you know exactly yeah. but um having like abolis just like in your repertoire of favorite foods is <laughs> that's kind of a flex <laughs> <laughs> that is a flex for sure you know that's kind of you know that said, they were nearly known to eat anything, you know, pretty much. And they, it was not uncommon for underdark societies to trade with a deep dragon by offering them food in the form of human or pr- humanoid prisoners, you know, or livestock or whatever. <laughs> pretty cool. Now, their lairs were usually uplocated in the upper dark and the middle dark, usually no deeper than seven miles. 
11 kilometers and were highly, highly idiosyncratic. Some were built within ancient ruins, others on the shore of underground lakes, and others were carved out of masses of living fungus. Regardless, most of these lairs were full of secret passages to allow the dragon to make quick escapes and to prepare surprise ambushes. Lairs were often difficult to access, even for the dragon itself, without using its serpentine or humanoid form, and were filled with traps and servants to protect the dragon's horde. We always know about dragon hordes. <laughs> <laughs> always. Yeah. It was, they especially, uh, speaking of their kind of hordes, you know, they were known to transplant dangerous specimens of fungi into their lairs to serve as traps. And in general, underground varieties of fungi were often uh, abounded among their, their lairs. They just kind of lived there, you know. The uh, mm. symbiotic feeding of the magic of the dragon and the fungi, you know. Okay, I, I like that because there's so much you can do with a dragon lair using fungus. Like you can let your imagination run wild so, when it comes to mushrooms. Something interesting I found in my research of purple dragons. Purple dragons do not really exist in fifth edition, right? So it's usually it's right. mostly second and third edition. Oh, that's when you get to fifth why edition, fifth edition is subpar. Yeah, you get mm. to fifth edition, and then you get to things like deep dragons, where they become one in the same. Mm. Where, but the you know the Descriptions are so different, you know, their abilities are mostly the same, but still, you know, have some differences. So it's like, why, why make this change? Like, for what? I don't know. Like, if you really wanted to, like, uh, s- separate it, but kind of keep it the same, just say like, yeah. uh, you know, purple dragons are the females and deep dragons I mean, are the males or vice that versa. Would, that would make and, sense. You know, I could see that. Distinction. But, you know, for the sake of that, <laughs> I'll go ahead and give you. A little short bit tidbit on what a deep dragon is. So deep dragon, also called purple dragons, or drakes of the depths and silent hunters, were a type of chromatic dragon that lived in the underdark. Despite their large size, the dragons were slender and agile, just like their, you know, purple dragon. Uh, they had the snake-like bodies and narrow wings and the thin limbs, allowing them to crawl through the tunnels. Um, their dragon scales were more the color of amethyst, but while in the dark, they appeared uh, almost nearly black. Um, so, you know, most of the same. But oh, the younger okay. ones apparently had more of the uh, purple or maroon coloration to their scales. This sounds and a little older, bit more metallic-ish. Almost. And older deep dragons were known to develop the fungal growths around their heads and necks. Hmm. That's All really right. cool. I can see that, like, almost looking like a crowd of mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I, mean, I like exactly that. Exactly, kind of like that, you know. And it makes sense with their, you know, the way that their layers work. If they have this symbiotic relationship, you know. I could see them like cultivating yeah. it on their back, like the way like yeah. moss grows on um, sloths. Like they cultivate yeah, mushrooms yeah. on their backside. I mean, okay, I'm all all of this stuff always gets my brain running, and I'm thinking really more does, of like right? I'm thinking of like a herbal dragon. That like has it, it. It has all of these different ointments and funguses and plant life living Ooh. on its back, and it'll actually help out people by like giving them the cures they need. Maybe it's a medicine dragon that actually specializes like in it. curing. Just like it's like lives like in the that. ground. It's like a Torterra. Like comes up out. Like yeah, um, like, oh, yeah. You like a, you got medicine dragons, and then like uh-huh. a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they, they could it. have uh, poisons, they could have uh, medicinal herbs, like they, they'd have like a whole selection mm-hmm. at totally. their disposal. You come to it, you're like, oh, yeah, I want this poison, and they're like, why? That was the other thing. You must prove to me you are worthy to receive this herb. Oh, yeah, that's a good Ooh. one, too. You have to, you that, have to work really hard real to get good. the mushroom from it, like yeah. that's a riddle or a, do a test. Yeah. Or, or maybe like it, a Mission Impossible. Poison. Like, yeah. 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 You approach the dragon yeah. for like a, a mushroom, and it's like, no, you must do this task for me. And <laughs> yeah. then you see from the corner of your eye, an elderly woman shuffles up, and she's like, something for my arthritis, please. And it goes, oh, here you go. You're right away. And just give yeah, it some basil. Still looks at you, back at you. What are you standing for? pharmacy? Yeah. Watch your business. Get out of here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, so, go dragon ahead and get to pharmacist the end in another world. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get to the end here and talk about the abilities, you know. Well, there is no official stat block for purple dragons, and really, not really one for deep dragons either. Though there is a fifth edition uh, SRD. But, you know, it's dragons. You can kind of make the assumption of what the stats are like, Mm. you know. 
you can just get you can just kind of mix like a red and a blue you know for stats and you know you pretty much got it but mm. what comes special with purple dragons is you know the spells that they get they get gust of wind okay. three times a day and you can even do this at a young age you know when they are juvenile they can do pyrotechnics like heat metal uh fire shield um and suggestion wall of force things like that you know uh flying here <laughs> in order to allow them to navigate the narrow underground tunnels better uh they also had the ability to kind of transmute the rock to mud cast spells like pass wall freedom of movement and stone shape um they also had the uh, oh distinctive ability was a unique shape changing power which developed as they age the first form they learned to adopt was that of a winged snake which did not reduce their overall size, but allowed them to slither and fly unimpeded by extra limbs. The second form they learned to adopt was that of a normal humanoid with the normal polymorph spell. Okay. And right, what's cool. also kind of interesting is deep dragons have a uh, an immunity to becoming intoxicated for some reason. Huh. Maybe by the mushrooms they eat? Maybe. Yeah. And they uh, also like have... Psychedelic the, mushrooms, the, you know. Yeah. They also have the uh, the psychic uh, breath weapon. Hmm. Huh. That, that's very interesting because, like, yeah. that, so it's got to be related in some degree to gem uh, dragons because mm-hmm. a lot of them have a lot of psionic stuff going on. So well, I'm not too sure really about the deep that. dragon. Uh, oh, sorry. It, it's yeah, funny I'm, you I'm say not that. Too about, sure. Oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say. I was going to say, it's funny that you mentioned the gem dragons, because when you mentioned that they can't be intoxicated, I thought like, oh, it's like how, uh, like I was thinking, like, that would be interesting if it was an amethyst mm-hmm. dragon, because there's an old ancient Greek uh, wives' tale that if you drink wine out of an amethyst cup, you won't get drunk. Oh, yeah, I did hear about Ooh. that. That, like, crystal, never heard like that. That neutralized poison and stuff. It's because amethysts and the color purple is associated with Apollo, who is also mm-hmm. the god of wine. And that apparently yeah. is like why uh, why you wouldn't get drunk out of drinking out of amethyst. Oh yeah, makes sense. Hmm. For sure, for sure. Weird ass well, Greeks. I, well, I'm not too myths. sure about the deep dragon's <laughs> breath. Maybe like a spore breath or something. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, like Bell Hazak from yeah. Monster Hunter. That's actually yeah. yeah that's exactly where my like brain that. was going yeah, and to. A kind of breath. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like the, the DM brain's like <laughs> mushrooms, spore breath. I'm glad you mentioned Nahazak because I, I was looking at your Twitter earlier and I saw you were talking about Monster Hunter. And I was uh, like, oh, I love Monster Hunter. <laughs> I know, me too. I was, I'm was, i so excited oh, for whatever man. they come up with next. The although, new Monster Hunter 6? Oh, man. Yeah, Monster Hunter Sometime. 6. Although, I'm, I'm, I would really love, people are saying Monster Hunter 6 or Monster Hunter World 2. I would love Monster yeah. Hunter World 2. because I started. I, yeah, I would too. World, you started with World. Oh yeah, man! Yeah, yeah, that was where I got Amazing. started with it. Hey, look! If you ever play Monster Hunter, you need somebody to play with. <laughs> I'm willing. <laughs> I'm thinking I gotta, I gotta get back into playing. What's the newest one that came out on the Switch? I stopped Rise? playing it. Yes, Rise. I gotta hey, get Rise. back into playing Rise. I kind of stopped because I was sad that it wasn't enough like World. Yeah, I feel mm. that. I feel that. It was a bit too. It too, like just walking in a corridor to the stadium and then back. Right. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed talking about purple and deep dragons. I have it's learned fun. a lot. And I think I, they, I think they of... need some love. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And now I've I've got I've learned about purple dragons, and I've also got some great little uh, nuggets yeah. of ideas for like <laughs> nuggets how to of wisdom. nuggets, uh, pearls of wisdom on how yeah. to like. Uh, maybe maybe twist the story around on those guys and make them different. Mm. Surprise your party with a purple dragon showing up. Mm-hmm. That would be crazy. Like, what the hell? <laughs> mm. you could Speaking of nuggets seeds. of wisdom, though, <laughs> I think this is a good time for Ryan's Descriptify. Ah, yes. The, the classic Descriptify. Now, Sam, uh, yes. you've seen... Uh, Critical Role. Uh, they did a little series uh, with yeah. the animated uh, stuff, and Vox Machina? Yep. yes, Vox Machina. And in that, they they mention a word like th- this was a new word to me, and like then I saw it again uh, later. Like someone else was uh, using the word ziggurat, and I'm like, whoa, 
what is a it's, ziggurat? It's a cool word. I do like that word a lot. It, it, it is, is cool. There. Yeah, I, it kind of gives me the same vibe as like obelisk, you know? Oh, like, totally. Yeah. Major it obelisk. Sounds vibes. like a dude. <laughs> yeah, right. it does. Like a Let me ziggurat. <laughs> 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 <It's> like, <laughs> ziggurat. What is a ziggurat? Okay, I, I'm glad you asked. Ziggurat Aside from it being. It, <laughs> my dad went out for a pack of ziggurats and never came back <laughs> I haven't seen him in years <laughs> I, I just think Broly like ziggurat <laughs> yes <laughs> Broly also uh, like damn. Name. doesn't it ziggurat ziggurat mm-hmm. totally. <laughs> anyway, to ziggurat, ziggurat use is. tackle <laughs> Please tell us what a ziggurat is because we only have wrong answers so far. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a massive structure that's uh well hold on, let me pull up the thing here. Cause like the first thing that shows up is the Mesopotam shows up in the Mesopotamian Valley and Western Iranian plateau, having the form of a uh t- terraced step pyramid. So it's like a, a big old like kind of a, a stepped pyramid type uh, structure, like a ritual type of uh, a building. Like, like, a, like a big kind of like a, yeah, I would think of like a pyramid, but it's a big it's like spire tower, right? Uh, yeah, like they, they have plateaus. Uh, like that's the very like a, you know how the uh, the Mayan pyramids, like they have those, yeah, those yeah. wide areas on them. Just imagine the, those being like full on terraces. So it, it's like that. And yeah, yeah, because you're not around. Exactly. Yeah, if, we, we got the terrible jokes all day. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, it, it's like a pyramid and it's used for like a typically like ritual type things and uh, whatnot. But the big thing is like th- those wide terraces it, and that's like, I guess that's the, the main difference between it, it and a pyramid. Right. And I just love it. Yeah, like uh, it's like part of partially derived from the Hebrew word uh, zakar, uh, which I probably mispronounced, uh, uh, which means protrude. Okay. So it's like protrusions, you know, okay. which kind of explains the little, little terracy parts. Right, and right. I, I think like. You can get a lot of mileage out of describing structures like that because yeah. everyone in their mother has seen a pyramid. But how many people have uh-huh. seen a ziggurat? I mean, there's uh-huh. so many words that have like their own kind of like energy that come with them, right? So like, if you describe like you walk in, you see a massive ziggurat, you know, immediately you're like, oh. Yeah, you're probably just gonna pay attention because they're like, what is that? Is that a creature? What is that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Exactly, and that's like fifty story ziggurat looms over you. And they're yeah. just like, "Oh my and god, uh, is it is it is it threatening?" <laughs> and it's like it's a it's a tower, bud. Yeah, it's just. A tower. Will, will it bite me? <laughs> and, and that's one of the Hilarious. fun things about uh, having these kind of words. Like mm-hmm. uh, when you're uh, DMing, sometimes players will zone out. So mm-hmm. you, you you throw something out like that. Okay, like, wait, what the fuck? Uh, are we going to combat now? <laughs> What'd you just call me? <laughs> we had an incident. I think this was Fool's Gold, or maybe the campaign afterwards, <laughs> where we were sitting around, and then Felix is describing something. And he's like, "You approach a giant, a giant stone flaming brazier," and everyone okay. just stops. And I'm just like, and he describes it, and, and then one of <laughs> somebody else at the table goes, "Do you mean a brazier?" <laughs> <laughs> There's a giant flaming bra. <laughs> Well, I mean, to this day, to this day, that's what I picture in my brain. Like, because at Ned's, like, how can I, how can I possibly? I don't even want to scrub that out of my brain. I want like, that to be the first thing. Like, <laughs> biblically, biblically accurate, like angel, but it's just a bra. <laughs> no, no, no. Hear, hear me out. It's like a kids next door battle ready armor. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That episode, but just <laughs> like the flaming brazier. Flaming battle ready <laughs> armor. It's just got like the, got him. It's perfect. Dude, and flaming armor sounds badass as fuck. 
Yeah, like Who doesn't love flame, flame or anymore? just armor that doesn't hurt. Mm. It's like you know, it's like ponytail where it doesn't hurt you or your allies. Yeah. Dude, mm. Okay. One of my favorite like magic items to get is the smoldering armor, which is basically that, Ooh. but it has like the black smoke. You know, mm. I love it. I love it. <laughs> that sounds good. It's so edgy, but I live for it. <laughs> What's an item that you guys Ooh. have played with or that you've given to your to your party that you have? Like, it's it's one of your favorites. Hmm. That's a good. Oh, for for me, it, this is an easy one. Definitely, yeah. mamas love hot sauce. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, you see, uh, in, in the Ooh. recent campaign that I ran, uh, the crocodile Mozzie, dear old Mozzie, uh, this guy is an Australian isekai from like he's like a '90s war veteran from Australia. Oh, perfect. Uh, perfect. So he's isekai in. And- Hang on, <laughs> war veteran from the Emu War. Yes. Oh, yay. <laughs> I'm going to high-five myself for that one. Perfect. So uh, this guy, uh, he's a he's a combination of, like, Crocodile Dundee, Steve Irwin, and Launchpad McQuack in one character. Fucking excellent. Fantastic. No notes. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, this, is a, this, this guy's a like first time player. This man is to Australia what Guy Fieri is to Americana. Perfect. Love it. <laughs> mm, exactly and th- the guy that uh his player he spent months living in character despite it being his first character oh. <laughs> like we used to we used to work together and he wanted to learn to play D and we were just we'd be just shooting the shit while we were working on the same machine and uh, he, we'd just be talking in character just how else are you gonna pass time they don't let us have music in there awesome and uh, oh, Mozzie was born oh. and he just kept going with it. But uh, <laughs> when I started this campaign, I let each player make a flavor magic item that's custom to them. So mm. this will have little to no impact in game. And it there was a few uh, interesting ones. Uh, the druid chose the infinite blunt wraps for rolling his joint. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, the, the wizard chose the ring of mage slap. Where it, all it is, <laughs> is just smack someone at, at range huh. for for no damage, so they'll just feel like ah, oh, like someone just slapped you. Hardly There's nothing never except your pride. It. Exactly. <laughs> and then here comes Mozzie with Mama's love hot sauce. Now this is a hot sauce that gets progressively hotter upon every use. And what we did oh, is we'd excellent. roll a. a per- yeah, we'd roll percentile on the Scoville scale, Amazing. which uh, can go up into like tens of that, hundreds of that, millions. So yeah. uh, uh, we kind of had to jump start it by uh, starting off with at least a few thousand. Uh, right, right. But after that, every use, you, you roll your percentile, add that to the Scoville scale every time. Oh and God. you'd just be like, oh, yeah, you got to You got to try this. Uh, put some hair on your chest. Apply some acid to your blade. <laughs> some tears in your eyes well uh, he, he ended <laughs> up just clear shampoo what do you mean uh, he just ended up uh, being a cook <laughs> essentially like he put it in his background afterwards okay. like hey I, I i'm just a you know i was a military cook that was a uh, my mm-hmm. mos uh, i did all the cooking it, like the, they went to uh infiltrate a pirate ship and he's on there and while uh Everybody else is doing their thing and getting hauled off to the brig. He's like, I've come to join the crew. Yeah. It looks like uh, you, you need a cook mate. Oh, well, I, I cook a right good chicken on the Bobby. <laughs> and he's just like, he's, he's just going right to town. He's like, he's the, he had like no charisma, but at the same time, like every time a charisma check came into question, he was just passing everything. You got the riz, awesome. man. You got the riz. Got the riz. <laughs> it my just kept working. My favorite problem would be from a one shot that I ran, uh, where I let my players kind of pick a magic item, and one of them chose the finger buddies. And uh, <laughs> like, so, like so basically, the, like the hmm? what you just like little finger puppets. Yeah, like the little finger yes. puppets. Oh, okay. Yeah, the ones you get when you're a kid. Them. We had Yay. ten of the little finger buddies. And basically, they were a magic item that you could animate with the drop of your blood, and they would mm-hmm. become, you know, a a creature under your, you know, under your ally status, right? 
so you could have 10 of these little like one health finger buddies but they could <laughs> all grapple like one enemy you know <laughs> just finger buddy swarm oh my God. you have a swarm of finger buddies <laughs> get them boys they, they created some <laughs> chaos with them let me tell you oh my gosh <laughs> it was great Oh, we oh, definitely got to bring those in for the homebrew segment. Yeah, yeah. We should talk about those one day. Oh, okay. Yeah, speaking of homebrew, homebrew, we are section. coming towards the end here. Yeah. Ryan, do you want to go ahead and talk about your homebrew for tonight? Well, you know what? Going into our homebrew s- section, or as I like to call it. Oh, what, do you, did, what do you call it? <laughs> my, my soundboard stopped working. That's <laughs> what I call it. Deafening silence. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it's always sunny Ooh. in the generic realm. <laughs> uh, I, I I present to you guys the uh, the giant slasher. Ooh. Now the the giant slasher. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I I click on it and then like it wants to go to another page. So but the hash bringing, da, 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 da. <laughs> you beat me to it, you jerk! I was just, I was trying to remember. The, I was trying to remember the joke. I could hear him in my head. Ah. <laughs> Go on, you two, get it out of your system. <laughs> the the, 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 the hash bringing slasher. That's our. That's only our uh, second SpongeBob joke tonight. <laughs> oh man, we're oh. Dude, when I worked at Pizza Hut, I we had these uh, big old rolling knives, and like I'd pick them up one day, hold them in a weird way, and like I I would tell people the story of the slice slinging slasher. Oh baby, oh, God. oh I, I I get the new people convinced. It's like, dude, you ever seen SpongeBob? The slice slinging slasher is a reference. But people have it, man. We're getting to that age. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Sorry, go it's ahead, still Jimmy. syndicated, though. You would think. Anyway, the the giant slasher is a it's a typical great sword, Hell uncommon. Yeah. It's got the reach property, which you know strength build. Woo! I'm sorry, go ahead. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy and two handed. Now, cool thing is that this is pretty open ended. It looks like it's uh, compatible with more than just your fifth edition because it's a weapon. Okay. Right. Uh, 2d6 slashing. And uh, it's got an ability, uh, horizontal gash. You can use your action to make a melee attack against all creatures within 10 feet of you with one attack roll to the AC of all targets. This attack deals 2d6 plus your strength mod in uh, slashing damage. You Look, can... man, we need more cleave attacks in D&D. Exactly. Ah. Uh, you can Stop. use this ability a number of times a day, equal to your proficiency bonus. So this should just be like an aspect standard. of using a two-handed weapon. You know what I mean? Like, like a yeah. like an air blade. Attack. Yeah, a range attack. Mm. Well, n- not even that, but you have you know you have a long ass weapon. You could make mm. like a big, you know, big swing. Uh huh. Mm. Totally. Yeah, like once it always, a day. It always makes me wonder, like, how are you? I'm more wondering about like. You're in a group of people, right? You're fighting. How are you hitting one person? How are you not hitting multiple? Mm. <laughs> I mean, like, That's a good point. Yeah, I think absolutely. It just becomes, I think it's just about the complication of it. Yeah. Like, unless it's, unless well, it's like a single ability you can only use once a day. Add to like, the skill, you know. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at this like it gets oh, wild. Uh, th- the weight of the blade is 18 pounds. A normal great sword should only weigh about five to eight interesting so this is an extra heavy weapon yeah this is it is which uh you know works good with the the range of 10 feet and it's got like a little bit of lore here with it uh it can location it can only be uh forged by those handling the finest metals indistinguishable to the craft of one that doesn't shatter after its very first strike if ever uh, found by long descendants of giants such as ogres or cyclops it uh, becomes their favorite weapon arousing distant memories of their ancestors mm. okay 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 they got a little idea thing uh, nice. idea such a long and heavy blade is designed to uh, get rid of all nearby opponents with powerful wide circular slashes so uh link spin attack right mm-hmm. right 
Uh, weapon mm-hmm. upgrades. A blacksmith with pure quality steel can enhance this weapon's properties. Okay. Costs about okay, okay. true metal. Costs about 400 gold. Uh, the first creature hit with the circular uh, movement of the horizontal gash receives max damage. Oh, I like it. <laughs> we need more weapon upgrades like this. Like, uh, Ooh, cool yeah. th- that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, that's why I love little uh, homebrews like this because mm. it creates a template and templates can set a standard. Yeah. I mean, I always love the idea of players like taking the initiative to be like, hey, what more can I do? You know, to get a little mm. bit stronger without yeah. having to level up, you know? Totally. Yeah. I, def- I-, I definitely have had players where I've asked, like, I don't want to get a new weapon every time I get, yeah. I want the weapon to grow with me. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. And the cool thing here is like it even has a value for it if someone wants to just buy outright at 550 gold. So, you know, okay. that, you could probably pick one of these up by the time you're third level. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah. I mean, shit, most people, I mean, I know I usually do when I start a campaign, you know, like I did with ours. You know, I kind of let you guys start with maybe more than I should have, you know, <laughs> some money. But that's enough to, you know, you could probably start with one of these and it wouldn't be that crazy. Yeah, I mean, if you're starting at a bit of a higher level, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, this is uh, put together by uh, the Glorious Compendium, and they have a Patreon, so anyone interested in uh, cool weapons like this, trust and believe they got other stuff that's going to be like this. Uh, like I, I would certainly compendium. hope so. Yeah, a full compendium. Uh, check them out. Uh, they got that whole Patreon deal. Uh, May I tell uh, you I've about found that reason is so cool. Hmm? Uh, may I tell you about a homebrew item that I have that's kind of similar Absolutely. to this idea? Mm, um, please. Uh, we encourage it. So this is in my current campaign I'm running is I gave the characters uh, actually like infused the weapons they already had with a stone called olivine, which is also known as humming stone. And it's a this okay. is like this is gonna remind you of some soul eater shit. Oh, uh, the, stone, the stone resonates with the person who is wielding the weapon and then attunes itself as if it's harmonizing with that person's uh, preferences and their spirit. And eventually the weapon will develop its own kind of consciousness. And then it'll develop like a special move or like an evolution to itself specifically to what Ooh. that player would love. For example, Dingo's nice. character, she had a large like Oni mace, like a huge maul. Mm. And um, the one thing that her character was lacking was any kind of range attacks. So what I gave her was the ability for this crystal green shards to grow on the outside of her weapon mace. And then with a large deft swing, she could actually hurl these blades Mm. of like pure crystal Mm. across the battlefield at her enemy. I love that. (laughs) That's so cool. Oh, man. It's a little bit of like a... It definitely fits the theme of what I brought for my homebrew too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, definitely. Now, picture... uh, if we you know we give this character that I'm about to talk about this a weapon that Orion just <laughs> oh, oh no. So I bring today the martial archetype of the slayer. Yes. So here's and a little uh, I got that pulled up on screen here. So So this is brought um pulled from Reddit. Uh go ahead and get the name of the person here. Looks like no Novrinian. About four years ago, posted on the Unearth Arcana subreddit. Thank you for posting this. I still like it. Pretty fucking cool. That's um, some cool so, artwork right there. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, cool. I, I, I like definitely Neo like that. Or like, uh, like um, Ghostshima yeah, like vibe, you know? Yeah, yeah like a you know real like, Ronin type situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, blood is the currency of the battlefield, and the reason why you fight. Your style edges on brutality, focusing only on the essence of victory and nothing more. To be a slayer is to stain your hands eternally red for the thrill. Fighters of this archetype usually abuse their disciplined training for this purpose, hungrily seeking battle for more worthy combatants to test their prowess. So, at third level, you get killer's intent. You strike with killing intent. Once per turn, when you take the attack action and make an attack with a melee weapon, you can choose to attack with disadvantage. If you do, regardless of whether or not you hit, the target must make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, On a failed save, the creature is frightened until the start of your next turn. You can use a feature a number of times equal to your constitution modifier. 
You're gaining expend uses on a short or long rest. Okay, let's keep that in mind. You got a chance to cause a fear. Also at level three, you get killer's instinct. Mm. <laughs> you always reach the next victim. Immediately before you make a melee weapon attack, you can use your bonus action to move up to your speed towards the target. If you do and it hits a frightened creature, you gain temporary hit point equal to half your fighter level plus your constitution modifier, which lasts until the start of your next turn. All right, so we got some synergies. I like it. Mm, for sure. Mm. So at level seven, you get Bloodhound. Your indulgence in the battlefield has steeled your will and sharpened your senses. You can't be surprised. And creatures within 60 feet of you, if they have blood, cannot benefit from being hidden or invisible against you if they're below half or half their hit point maximum. So you get kind of like a, you know, a bloodhound, a blood mm-hmm. scent ability. I yeah, like, yeah. I like that too. Kind of get this bloodlust of like finish them off. Level 10, you get thrill of battle. You have an advantage on initiative checks. Also, there isn't a moment when you aren't fighting. When you use your second wind, you may also make a second melee attack with advantage against a creature within reach. On a hit, the target cannot take reactions until the start of your next turn. Mm-hmm. Level 15, we have Harbinger. The sight of you signifies a slaughter. When you use your killer's instinct to move towards a target, your movement does not provoke opportunity attacks and ignores difficult terrain. Also, a creature cannot gain advantage on saving throws against being frightened of you. Ooh. That's and last <laughs> level 18, last but not least, we have last breath. You've breathed your last breath of the person. The hunt for battle is all that drives you forward. After succeeding on a death saving throw, you can choose to stand up and act as if you had started your turn conscious. You remain conscious until the end of your turn. The first attack you make during this turn is made with advantage and deals an additional 5d10 damage of the weapon's type on a hit. While you have zero hit points during this turn, taking damage causes death saving throw failures as normal. Though three death saving throw failures do not kill you. At the end of your turn, you fall unconscious if you still have zero hit points or die if you have three death saving throw failures. Once you use this feature, you cannot use it again until you complete a long rest. All right. Nothing too crazy, you know, and it has some pretty interesting synergy that you don't mm-hmm. really see too often. Yeah. And you know, I like the theme. <laughs> it's got the really vibe. Go, yeah, you can really go with like kind of till the last breath, you know, final stand samurai. Like your party mm. is down. You're going to finish this fight no matter what. I like it. <laughs> I, I know <laughs> some players, you know. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to them for checking for creating this. That's awesome. I would love to make a character like this. <laughs> I, I, I really like kind of hit. In, huh? Do you like making super serious characters? No, not really. I mean, <laughs> a lot of the characters I've made are kind of like they're driven. You know, they're they're open to you know being changed. What's really mm-hmm. funny is one of my favorite characters I've made was a warforged monk named Titan who was kind of like, had been wandering the world for a long time. The war he was made for is over. So he's just kind of looking for his purpose. He wants to understand people and Aww. emotions. So there was a lot of, you know, moments of like social awkwardness. <laughs> that, that sounds was really very fun sweet. To role play. Yeah. I like stuff like that. All he knew was to just be a strong protector boy. That's a lot of great <laughs> potential. I can, I can yeah, definitely see sure. that being fun to DM mm. for. Yeah, I would that, that was a great use. game. <laughs> that was a really fun. I missed that. I missed that campaign. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, it fizzled too uh, soon. <laughs> it did. Aww. It did. I went to the DM, no, I went think to the camping graveyard. Uh, as yeah. as they all seem to do, unfortunately. The Shadow Realm. Yes, I, I, our Shadow DM Realm. succumbed to uh, DM depression. So. Oh no! I'm sorry to <laughs> oh, hear that. Oh, the tragedy happens it, to the best of us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But that is perfect to say here, you know, if you are struggling with mental health, know you are not alone and that we love you and we support you. We're proud of everything you are doing. DMing is hard. Being a player is hard. We see you. Mm -hmm. Mm. And And even if you feel alone in the world, there are people who make stuff legitimately just so that you, the person out there, can find it and love it. Like people who make stories and make artwork and make videos or podcasts 
Yeah. Like we are actually making it so that somebody out there in the world can just find it and enjoy it. And that's the only reason why. Yeah. Exactly. And as we're coming to the end here, it's perfect time to say, you know, where can these people find you? Oh, okay. Well, uh, on the husk that is Twitter, <laughs> they can find me at, at yeah. Dynabees, D-Y-N-A-B-E-E-Z. Same with, uh-huh. same, same tag for Blue Sky. Uh, if Blue Sky does end up rising in Twitter's place. Um, Oh, that's blue sky. It's I've, like I've never it's, heard of it. <laughs> what the fuck is blue sky? <laughs> blue sky is like it's kind of the one that all the artists are going to right now. It it oh, looks like, it it's looks like deviant in, art. But, yeah, but uh, it, it looks new, like a new deviant. deviant art? It looks like a legit Twitter clone. Like if you're just like, I wish oh. something else would pop up that is exactly like Twitter, but not Twitter. It's blue sky. <laughs> uh, like it, the format is exactly the same. Oh, all right. um, and Sorry, unfortunately, okay. the only those are the only two places I you can really find me because I I can't handle more than one social media at once. So even these two is oh, just like mm, I feel that. Otherwise, yeah. if you follow Dingo Doodles <laughs> on YouTube, you'll likely see. Uh, I mean, you'll see Gothy popping up once in a while. You might also mm. see a couple uh, collaboration projects that I'll be working on in the future. So maybe some oh, yeah. some stuff. That's a that's a good place to see what's up with the with the Fool's Gold crew and the. OG Swamp Druid. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I'm definitely curious to see some of that. And maybe we could even have you come back on in the future once uh, uh, some of those projects a little further underway, you know, find out a little bit more about what you're working on. Sure, oh. absolutely. I mean, I, I have some stuff that's working. I'm working on in the back burner right now that I'm not allowed to talk about. But uh, oh, secrets. Ooh, that's always the good secrets. shit, right? <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely when I have the chance to talk about it, you bet your butt I'm gonna be grabbing everybody by the collar and being like, listen to this thing I'm working on now that I'm allowed to tell oh, you no, you're no. to leave. Oh yeah, happily we would have you mm-hmm. on again. <laughs> yeah, as soon as that comes up, you you let us know. We'll be like, okay, we, we gotta get bees back on the show. <laughs> bees uh, in the trap, man. <laughs> <laughs> bees back in the house. Hey. Mm. It was great meeting you. It was great having you. Oh, it was great. Thank you guys for letting me hang out in your yeah. little your little Absolutely. dungeon space. Ryan, go ahead and do our <laughs> your outro. breakfast nook of a dungeon area. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it absolutely you know, is. <laughs> guys, chilling. You know, it's like a DM's table. You know, session yeah. zero is concluded. We're just hanging out. Yeah, yeah. everybody's <laughs> everybody's got their post their post campaign their post exactly. campaign drinks, and it's just chill vibes. And wondering uh, what time we're all going to get to meet up next. Classic D and D. It really is like that. That's the goal, really. Uh, oh, Sam! What? We have one bit of news for people that people that actually involve themselves in Critical Role. Uh, oh, I mean, n- not bees and me, but like you, you might be interested. <laughs> Oh, I okay. <laughs> All right, man, I'm getting ahead of myself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a it's a small thing, I promise. I promise. All right, all right, go ahead, go ahead. So uh, their uh, their UK show that they're doing on October 25th, uh, the, the, their live show is yes. actually going to be uh, they're streaming it to cinemas in both America and Canada. Oh shit! So oh, one night only. So a- anybody Maybe. that likes that, you know, you could see Critical Role in theaters. I I don't know why you would, because it's kind of weird. But like, they launched uh, yeah, th- the third go- campaign in theaters. Ooh, uh, I-, I guess so. Like, uh, th- they're going back. It's the uh, Mighty Nine thing. Like, they- they're getting back oh. to campaign two oh. or like a one night thing. Yeah, yeah, that thing. Good for them. Mm. Whichever one that was. It was really cool. (laughs) Probably Vox Machina, because, like, Mighty Nine would be a reunion for them at this point. Uh, No, I I remember, yeah, because it was Jester. They did, like, that big, like, mass heal. I remember. She was crazy. Sorry, Uh, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. People really like uh, the, the the Mighty Nine, you know. That's a good one. That's really good. I would love to see you know LA come to a show as well. That would look dope. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope but, those guys uh, keep like on keeping on. Oh yeah, for sure. I uh, like. I, I think uh, Matt Mercer, like he does a good job, and I, I'd like to see uh, 
more from them. You know, it's like Look, they Crystal do a lot of good for the community on like the whole. Disney of D and D. Yeah, oh, that, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of the flagship of D and D right now, uh, which I mean, yeah. and they're great representations for it. Them over Wizards of the Coast any day. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. absolutely. They can have the torch. Uh- <laughs> I would laugh if, like, a critical role in, like, every other podcast and, like, D&D uh, adjacent entity that uses it just came together and just, like, bought wizards from Hasbro. That'd be <laughs> so funny. the potential. All right, that's what we're doing. You know, we heard it here, folks. We'll, uh... <laughs> what did I do the the, the plot to buy D&D, take it back. <laughs> with all of the two dollars that we have to our name <laughs> i have two dollars and a, an expired coupon if you take <laughs> for michael's <laughs> well you know i i got some pocket lint to go to go with that and, and i'll raise you a paper clip i have an iou whoa, whoa. Slow IOU. Down, man. <laughs> Ooh, anyway <laughs> This has been Dungeons and Talk Shows. Y'all can find us on our Discord server, on the Twitter, uh, wherever podcasts be podcasting, and of course, the YouTube and the Rumbles. But hey, we're nerds, so what do we know? (laughs) Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Have a good weekend! Bye-bye! Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. That was nice. You did great, bees. Thank oh, you. Yeah. That was fun. We forgot to do the Muppet Lord of the Rings bit, though. We did. Oh, we did. oh yeah, that would have been. Just get. <laughs>